Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. If it wasn't for Andrew's teachings, I would never be where I am today. I would never have victory. I would be living a life of defeat. It was Andrew's teaching that allowed me to develop that faith. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing a series that I started last week talking about how to discover the keys to staying full of God. God loves us more than any of us have ever understood or known. And whether or not you experience that fullness and joy and healing and deliverance of God is not up to God. It's really up to you. There are things that you do that either increase or diminish the revelation of God. And I've got this book that I'm offering to you absolutely free of charge. We will give it to you, pay the postage on it. I want you to get this truth because this is powerful and we're making that available to you as our gift. And as I said, I'm now into my second week of teaching. I'm teaching from Romans chapter 1, verse 21, and in that verse, it lists four things that people do to walk away from God. And you could be talking about walking away from a revelation of God or walking away from God Himself or walking away from healing or walking away from deliverance or anything that God has ever done in your life. It's not God who comes and goes, who turns off His flow of joy and anointing and healing and power towards you. It's us that decrease what God can do in our life. That's what these verses are saying. It says in Romans 1, 21, because that when they knew God, the first thing is they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, they became vain in their imaginations, and then their foolish heart is darkened. So there's four things listed in this one verse. There's other things listed that if we just kept going through Romans chapter 1, it would give you a number of other things that people do to just decrease the influence of God in their life. But when God touches you, Satan comes immediately trying to steal away the word that's been sown in your heart, but he has to, first of all, get the first thing he tries to do is to get you to devalue what God has done in your life. And that's what I've been talking about all of last week and even on yesterday's program. I also combined with this in... Um, Romans chapter 11, verse 13, where Paul said, I magnify my office. That word for magnify and the word for glorify here in Romans 1, is the same word. And so I think it, it's a proper thing to say that to glorify means to magnify God. You need to magnify what God has done in your life. And did you know you can take something that is in a sense a small thing, and yet you can magnify it. On the negative side, this is what Satan does often. He will take some little tiny thing that really is not that big of a deal, but by the time you get through focusing on what this person said about you or how they neglected you or whatever's happened, you just take this little tiny like toothpick that's in your path and you meditate on it until it becomes this big old ball batting that devil's just beating your brains out with something that really is relatively insignificant. I've had people come in my prayer lines before and they tell me what their problem is. And I've literally had to bite my lip before to keep from laughing at them because this is your problem. <laughs> I have worse things than that happen to me on my good days. And yet some people are just overcome by things that are relatively Nothing. I remember one guy who came to me, and I happened to know this guy, and he had a $100 bill that was due, and he had been trying to believe God for this money to come in, and it hadn't come in, and he was just on the verge. He says, I'm ready to just quit and give up on the whole thing. And yet I knew his testimony, and he had been delivered out of drugs. He had been set free from just, I mean, he had been healed of things. There was great miracles that had happened in his life, but he was just so focused. It's like he had blinders on looking at this one problem. He had taken it totally out of context. And you know what I did? I just began to start going back and reminding him, don't you remember how God set you free from this, how He healed your marriage, how He did this, this? And I just started naming things. And by the time I got through putting his problem into perspective, 
it had shrunk that problem down to where, you know, this is so minor compared to the other things that I've been through. And whether you know it or not, if you are born again, if you have made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, that is the greatest miracle. You have passed from death unto life. If the worst came to worse, I mean, the doctor tells you you're going to die, and if you didn't receive your healing, and if you died, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to get to see Jesus. You're going to live forever in a body that cannot be corrupted, can never get sick. You're going to live in a mansion. If you looked at things in the proper way, did you know that you've got nothing to be complaining about? you got to magnify those things. Magnify the good things that God has done. If you're born again, you... I know many people are going to choke on this. You wouldn't agree with this, but I'm right and you're wrong. I'm telling you, if you are born again, you got no reason to gripe and complain because at the worst, very worst, your future is so bright you got to squint to look at it. I mean, God is going to just... It, heaven's going to be a blast. And if you never saw things manifest here in this life, this life is not all that there is. You got a great future. And if you were to magnify your salvation and just think about all of the great things that are now available to you, your sins are forgiven. I guarantee you someday this world's going to be over. The Bible teaches us that this world is going to pass away with a fervent heat and there's going to be a new heaven, there's going to be a new earth, new Jerusalem's going to come down, and we're going to see people who are probably holier than us, more talented than us, more beautiful than us, more of everything, and they're going to be rejected because they didn't receive Jesus. They're going to spend eternity in hell, and here we are, Mr. and Mrs. Nobody, and we get accepted by God, and we live forever in all of His glory. If you were to just take those truths and magnify that and get to glorifying God and putting value on Him, I guarantee you, you could reach a place to where, what else? Nothing else could affect you. You know, I grew up in the Baptist church, and they didn't believe that miracles happened today. They didn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And so they didn't really believe in seeing much intervention of God in this life. You, had, you were as sick as your neighbor. You were as poor as your neighbor. You were as worried and stressed out as your neighbor. But man, they glorified heaven. They put worth and value on heaven. And I saw people in the Baptist church who didn't know a thing about healing, deliverance, joy, peace, any of those things, but they rejoiced in heaven. And I saw people endure things that sometimes spirit-filled Christians who have all of these promises and do believe that God can intervene in our life, they aren't faring as well as some people that don't even believe those things because those people have magnified heaven and in comparison to what God has awaiting for us in glory, all of the sufferings of this present world are not even worthy to be compared with the, with the glory which shall be revealed in us. It all comes down to this thing about glorifying God. So that's the very first thing. Man, I've spent a lot of time talking about that. The second thing listed in Romans chapter 1, verse 21, if you don't glorify God, then the next thing it says, they were not thankful. And did you know these things, even though I believe that there's a progression, it's like a cascading effect, there, there's a progression here, they're all interrelated. Did you know that you cannot truly be thankful without glorifying God? As I was using that verse over in Romans chapter 11, verse 13, Paul said, I magnify my office. And that word magnify there is translated from the same Greek word that was translated glorify in Romans 1, 21. Look at this passage of Scripture over in Psalms chapter 69. And if I had time, I could prove to you that this is a prophetic psalm. It's Jesus speaking. There's a number of times in here he talks about them offering him gall to drink and... Um, plucking the beard off of him and things like this. So this is a prophetic psalm. It's actually Jesus speaking. And in Psalms chapter 69 and verse 30, he says, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. So remember that magnifying and thanksgiving, I mean, magnifying and glorifying God are the same thing. That first thing over here in Romans 1, you got to glorify God and then you got to be thankful. You cannot 
truly magnify God and make God and His what He's done in your life bigger without being thankful. Thanksgiving is how you magnify God. You know, one of the signs of the end time over in 2 Timothy chapter 3, let me just read this to you. These are the signs of the end time. 2 Timothy 3, 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Man, I tell you, this is just, this is up to date. This is 2022. This is describing our society. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Notice that being unthankful is a sign of the end times, and it's listed right along with being disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. This list of all of these things, I think there's 16 things listed here, signs of the end times. One of them is being unthankful. And I tell you, this is something that is in epidemic proportions, pandemic proportions today is people being unthankful. If Satan can get you to where you are not magnifying God and putting worth and value on the things of God, then what will happen is you will automatically value this. You're going to put value on something. You're either going to value God and His opinion, what God has done, or you're going to value men and their opinion and the acceptance of people and things. You can't just not value anything. Whether you know it or not, you place a value on everything that comes your way all day long. When you hear a news broadcast, you either discount that and say, well, here's no more fake news. This isn't news. This is propaganda. Or you just take it all in and put value on it and believe every word that they say. You're the one that determines this. Nobody else makes these decisions for you. It's you that does it. You know, a friend of mine said that he read one time that somebody broke into a business And they didn't steal anything. What they did was go change all the price tags on everything. And they took something that sold for $200 and put an $8 tag on it. And they took something that sold for $8 and put $200 on it. And they just switched all of the prices. And the the store operated until nearly noon before they figured out what had happened. And it caused mayhem because, you know, things have different values. And the sad fact is we are valuing things today that I don't believe God values at all. You know, I hate to get so specific, but I I don't want you to miss my point. But there are things on television today. Uh, I've never watched this show, American Idol. I've got friends who watch it, and so I'm not saying that you're of the devil, but it just turns me off in the first place that you call it American Idol. Man, that's just, that's offensive to me in the first place. And then the way that they honor these people who have no integrity whatsoever, the way that they take the people who are movie stars and football and and athletic talent and they put them on the magazine covers and they pump these up and and talk about how awesome these people are, and yet they have no integrity. They can't keep a marriage together. They shack up with people. They have children from all of these different people and stuff. If you put all of those famous people together and put their integrity, it wouldn't even fill a thimble. And yet our our world honors that. And people just swoon over these people and think, oh, wouldn't it be awesome to be like them? I don't think God values it that way. I don't think God places value on somebody just because they can sing, because they can kick a ball, because they look good, because they can show more flesh than somebody else shows, because they're more extreme in the things that they do. God doesn't value that, and you shouldn't value it. If you start putting value on those things, then you have to devalue God. And if you see people that are 
openly gay and homosexual and stuff. I'm, you love those people and you pray for them, but if you value them and think, aren't they awesome, when God says that that's an abomination to Him, then you have just, you know, this seesaw thing that I was talking about, you have just devalued God and His Word and its impact, and you have exalted something over here that is an abomination to God. Now, we love those people and you pray for them, but I'm saying that there's something wrong with us glorifying these things. And one of the ways that you glorify God and put the proper value on it is you have to remember and you have to be thankful. Did you know Thanksgiving, if you're going to be thankful, it involves at least two things. There's probably a lot of things, but two things for sure that it involves. One of them is memory. You can't be thankful for something if you don't remember what God has done. Memory is involved in thanksgiving. The other thing is humility. Did you know when you are saying thank you, you're acknowledging somebody else. You're acknowledging that somebody did something for you. And yet we have this mentality of I'm a self-made man or a woman and we get to where we're all wrapped up in ourself and we make such a small package but we get to where we're just thinking about things from our own standpoint. When you constantly are going around and just saying thank you, especially to God, you're acknowledging that, God, I may have worked 40 hours this week, but you're the one who gave me my health. You're the one who gave me the gift of being born in a nation where we have freedom and liberty that I can go out and work. You're the one who gave me my whatever skills and talents that I have. I might be able to develop them, but I can't develop what you didn't put in there. When you just start thanking God, thank you, God, for all of this. When you go and thank the Lord for the day and for the beautiful things. You know, at the time I'm making these programs, uh, it snowed last night. And when I drove in, we had two or three inches of snow on all of the trees on the forest. Everything was just covered in white. And it was a perfectly clear day. The sun was out. And man, I was just thanking God and talking about how beautiful it was. Did you know this didn't happen just automatically? It didn't just evolve. God's the one who, who figured out snow. I've heard it said that they said that, you know, there's trill uh, it, trillion doesn't even do justice to it, but there's just untold numbers of snowflakes and there's not one snowflake that's like another. It's like fingerprints. They're all unique. And they have these ge geometric patterns in them. I've seen them amplified, magnified, and, and they're beautiful. That didn't just happen. God thought through that. God made every snowflake individually. And when you see that, you ought to be thankful and say, thank you, Father, for just designing things in such a beautiful way. Thank you for making a sunrise and a sunset. God's one who decided that the atmosphere uh, you know, separates the light into these different colors and all of these things. When you go through your day just constantly saying thank you, you are remembering. You're going back and rehearsing your victories. You know, this is the reason that in the Old Testament it told us not to destroy our neighbor's landmark. It's the reason that Samuel raised Ebenezer, this stone that he called Ebenezer, and it was a memorial to remember I'VE GOT MEMORIALS IN MY LIFE. I'VE GOT PHYSICAL MEMORIALS. I'VE GOT A THING ON MY PROPERTY WHERE I WAS BUILDING THIS TRAIL AND THIS BOULDER THAT WAS ABOUT TWO FEET, TWO AND A HALF FEET TALL, AND THE THING I'M SURE WEIGHED A TON, AND I WAS TRYING TO MOVE IT INTO POSITION, AND I SLIPPED AND FELL, AND THAT THING ROLLED DOWN MY ARM AND HIT MY HEAD. IT SHOULD HAVE KILLED ME, AND YET IT DIDN'T. AND I'VE GOT A MEMORIAL RIGHT THERE. I'VE GOT A LITTLE PLAQUE THAT I PUT UP THAT SAYS, on April, on uh, August the 25th, 1999, God saved my life when this rock rolled over my hand, hand, arm, and head. And then underneath there, I put the scripture that says, God preserves the simple. Because, man, it was stupid what I was doing. <laughs> and God preserved my life anyway. And I've got that memorial. And every time I go walking on my trail, I see this place where I could have died and God saved my life. You know, one time I was visiting with a group of pastors, and I don't know how, but we got off on talking about times that we'd nearly died. Did you know I fell off of a thousand-foot cliff, and my brother caught me in midair, and then he started falling off with me, and the guy behind him grabbed him and pulled us up. 
I HIT MY HEAD ON A DIVING BOARD TRYING TO DO A FLIP WHEN I WAS ABOUT 11 YEARS OLD, AND I KNOCKED MYSELF OUT, AND I WENT TO THE BOTTOM OF THE SWIMMING POOL, AND SOMEBODY JUST HAPPENED TO BE WALKING BY LATE AT NIGHT AND FOUND ME AND PULLED ME OUT. I COULD HAVE DROWNED. I, I'VE BEEN THROUGH SO MANY THINGS. I COULD HAVE DIED TWO OR THREE TIMES IN VIETNAM. I GO BACK AND REMEMBER THESE THINGS. AND YOU KNOW WHAT? IT MAKES ME THINK THAT GOD'S GOT A PURPOSE FOR MY LIFE, AND IT MAKES ME PUT VALUE. THIS IS HOW YOU MAGNIFY GOD, IS WITH THANKSGIVING. GO BACK AND REMEMBER THE GOODNESS OF GOD. I REMEMBER A TIME THAT I WAS IN uh, CHICAGO MINISTERING, AND A WOMAN CAME UP, AND SHE ASKED FOR PRAYER, AND I FORGET NOW WHAT HER SITUATION WAS, BUT SHE WAS REALLY DEPRESSED AND REALLY DISCOURAGED, AND THE LORD JUST SHOWED ME THINGS ABOUT HER THROUGH A WORD AND KNOWLEDGE. I KNEW THINGS ABOUT HER THAT THERE WAS NO WAY I COULD HAVE KNOWN. AND I FORGOT WHAT HER PROBLEM WAS AT THAT MOMENT. BUT I WENT BACK AND THROUGH A WORD OF KNOWLEDGE, THE LORD SHOWED ME THAT SHE HAD BEEN SEXUALLY ABUSED WHEN SHE WAS A CHILD AND THAT SHE HAD BEEN BITTER OVER THAT AND WONDERED WHY GOD DIDN'T PREVENT THIS, WHY GOD DIDN'T INTERVENE. AND THERE HAD ALWAYS BEEN THIS KIND OF ANGER TOWARDS GOD ABOUT WHY DID HE LET THESE THINGS HAPPEN AND THAT THAT WAS THE ROOT OF HER PROBLEMS THAT SHE WAS DEALING WITH RIGHT THEN. AND I TOLD HER ALL OF THESE THINGS, AND I SAID, BUT GOD SAYS, AND THEN I STARTED TELLING HER ABOUT HOW THAT THE PERSON THAT HAD SEXUALLY ABUSED HER WANTED TO KILL HER. SHE COULD HAVE EASILY DIED. AND I SAID, GOD INTERVENED. GOD prepares, uh, PRESERVED YOUR LIFE. AND AS I PUT HER BACK IN REMEMBRANCE OF THE WAY THAT GOD HAD SAVED HER WHEN SHE SHOULD HAVE DIED, COULD HAVE DIED, ALL OF A SUDDEN, THAT MEMORY JUST MADE EVERYTHING CHANGE WHEN SHE STARTED REMEMBERING THE WAY THAT GOD HAD DELIVERED HER. THIS IS WHAT IT SAYS TWO DIFFERENT TIMES OVER IN 2 PETER. PETER SAYS, I'M STIRRING YOU UP THROUGH PUTTING YOUR MINDS IN WAY OF REMEMBRANCE. MEMORY WILL STIR YOU UP. YOU KNOW, I'VE HAD TIMES THAT I'VE HAD FLASHBACKS TO VIETNAM AND ALL OF A SUDDEN SOME SMELL OR SOME THOUGHT OR SOMETHING JUST MAKES ME GO BACK AND I REMEMBER THINGS. MEMORY IS A POWERFUL FORCE. IT'S EITHER A POWERFUL FORCE FOR EVIL OR A POWERFUL, powerful FORCE FOR GOOD. JUST DEPENDS ON HOW YOU PROCESS IT. AND MEMORY IS INVOLVED IN THANKSGIVING. YOU NEED TO CONSTANTLY BE REMEMBERING. YOU NEED TO HAVE MEMORIALS IN YOUR LIFE. YOU NEED TO HAVE THINGS THAT YOU JUST MAKE MAJOR, MAJOR DEALS. FOR ME, MARCH THE 23rd, 1968, IS A DAY I'LL NEVER GET OVER. PROBABLY THE SECOND MOST IMPACTFUL EXPERIENCE I EVER HAD WITH THE LORD WAS JANUARY THE 31ST, 2002, WHERE GOD TOLD ME I WAS LIMITED IN MY my SMALL THINKING. AND I'VE GOT HUNDREDS AND HUNDREDS AND HUNDREDS OF THINGS THAT I GO BACK AND REMEMBER. AND I THANK GOD FOR IT. AND YOU KNOW, HERE'S SOMETHING THAT WILL REALLY HELP YOU. IF YOU WILL BEGIN TO START GLORIFYING GOD AND THANKING HIM, MAGNIFYING HIM, AND GO BACK AND JUST REMEMBER THE GOODNESS, IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT HAS BEEN OVER HERE THAT'S BEEN DOMINATING YOU. AS YOU START GLORIFYING GOD, IT WILL AUTOMATICALLY SHRINK THOSE PROBLEMS, AND YOU WILL START EXPERIENCING THE SAME JOY, THE SAME PEACE, THE SAME ANOINTING THAT YOU FELT BACK WHEN GOD DID THOSE THINGS. IT'S NOT GOD THAT CHANGED. IT'S NOT GOD THAT TOOK ANYTHING AWAY. IT'S YOU THAT CHANGED YOUR FOCUS AND YOU STARTED MAGNIFYING AND GLORIFYING THE NEGATIVE THINGS INSTEAD OF THE POSITIVE THINGS. MAN, I'VE GOT A LOT MORE TO SHARE AND I'M GOING TO CONTINUE TALKING ABOUT THIS. I WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO GET THIS BOOK. IT'S OUR FREE GIFT TO YOU. WE'LL PAY THE POSTAGE ON IT AND EVERYTHING. IT'S A 200 PLUS PAGE BOOK ON DISCOVER THE KEYS TO STAYING FULL OF GOD IF YOU'LL LISTEN, OUR ANNOUNCER WILL GIVE YOU ALL THE INFORMATION. YOU CAN ALSO GET A STUDY GUIDE. WE'VE GOT A PACKAGE OFFER. AND uh, LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU THIS INFORMATION. AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY AND JOIN ME AGAIN TOMORROW AS WE CONTINUE ANOTHER EPISODE OF THE GOSPEL TRUTH. LEARN THE ESSENTIALS TO HAVING A STRONG RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD WHEN YOU GET ANDREW'S TEACHING, DISCOVER THE KEYS TO STAYING FULL OF GOD. TODAY, ANDREW IS OFFERING HIS BOOK AS A GIFT TO YOU ABSOLUTELY FREE. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive this free offer. Andrew's entire series is available in a book, study guide, or as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. 
Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Andrew is offering these products as part of the Discover the Keys package. This package includes the book, study guide, and your choice of either a CD or DVD album. The Discover the Keys package has a catalog value of $80, but it can be yours today for only $60. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Now that we've got our garage paid off, I'm going full steam ahead on building student housing. We're breaking ground in the spring and we are believing that by the fall of 2023, we are gonna have student housing. It just depends on how the response goes as to how quickly we can build it. And so I'd like to encourage you to pray about becoming a foundation builder with us. That's what we call this partnership for building out our Karis Bible College. Check it out at awmi.net. Coach Tony and also JB, you know, we started this about two years ago, uh, talking about the kneeling issue in the NFL. And you were sharing with me some of the background stories behind these people. And we just got to saying, we need to get these stories out there because there is another side. I'm Tony Dungy and I'm really excited about a new series I've been working on with James Brown called Beyond the Game. You've been called Captain Kirk, <laughs> yeah. you know, a leader of men. Jesus ultimately did that better than anyone and, uh, and his influence to this day is greater than anyone's. And so I look to him, look to the Bible, look to scripture and, and the gospels to say, how did he lead? What did he do? and then try to live that out. Coaches and athletes in your favorite sports, and you get to see a side of them that we don't always get to see, their face side. We have so much negative press about athletes and you know, spousal abuse and all kinds of things going on. And I think that this is really gonna make a difference for people to see that there's some really godly people out there. Clearly, it's the aberrant behavior of a few that gets the majority of the headlines. We get so frustrated, especially when we'll go out and do a feature piece uh, but it has to get cut down into a one minute or two minute interview. And the audience can't really hear what is in the heart of these men. We're thankful to you, as Tony said, to give us this platform, Andrew. We'd love to have your help. Go to beyondthegame.co to find out details. Gospeltruth.tv provides free 24 seven access to biblical teaching you can trust. Our Grace and Faith channel features teaching from Andrew Womack and other ministers he's personally invited to share with you. Watch daily live programming, including Bible studies and the Truth and Liberty Coalition. Start watching for free today 